Hi, I am Lieutenant Colonel Ramirez. I am a reservist here at the 50th Space Wing Legal Office at Shriver Air Force Base, Colorado. Uh, in my civilian capacity, however, I am a state district court judge in the 17th Judicial District in Colorado, where I deal with matters of domestic relations. If you're watching this video, it is because you have some questions about issues as it relates to allocating parental responsibilities for your child where there was never a marriage. We have other videos in regards to divorce as well as child support for military members. And what I am going to do in this video is talk to you about the issues that will be covered in a legal case to allocate those parental responsibilities. The first step is jurisdiction. If you recently were stationed here in Colorado, uh, the law requires that you had to have been here for at least 91 days, and that the child had to have been here for at least 182 days before you can file. Once that is accomplished, then you may file what is called the Petition for Allocation of Parental Responsibilities you can go to the Colorado Judicial Self-Help site uh, and download that form. So once you have the jurisdictional uh, part down, the other parent of the child does not have to be here in Colorado for the court to have jurisdiction, but you must serve that individual. Then once that process occurs, there is uh, a nine factor test that the court will look at to determine what is in the best interest of your child. So this is going to cover a situation where you have a child and you and the other parent were never married. So the first step in what's referred to as allocation of parental responsibilities is called the wishes of the parties. And that simply means what are your desires and what are the desires of the other parent. Ultimately, the court is going to do what is in the best interest of the child, but the court will certainly take your uh, request into account. The important thing to consider is not the what, but the why. That is to say, I believe that the child should live with me during the school year because of X. And step number two is the wishes of the child through the parents. Again, this is what does the child want if the child is of an age that the child can make those desires known. There is this common misconception that once a child turns 12 years old that the child can decide who to live with. Uh, that is not the case here in Colorado. That is only one of nine factors that the court takes into consideration. The third is referred to as the relationship of the child with his or her parents, siblings, and any other person who may significantly affect the child's best interest. So, so what does that mean? Uh, do you have other children that live in the home? Do you have a significant other or a spouse who also lives in this home, but more importantly, how do they treat your child? Factor number four, the child's adjustment to their home, their school, their community. The court is going to want to know if they've been in the same school for years or if you just got stationed here nine months ago. The court is going to want to know if they are in after school programs, in a choir, in sports. The court is going to want to know all of those things before making a decision whether or not to leave the, the child in that same school district. The fifth factor is the mental and physical health of all individuals involved. Do either of the parties have uh, physical issues or mental health issues? Is one of the parties sick? And are any of those issues going to affect the best interest of the child? The sixth factor is the ability of the parties to encourage the sharing of love, 
affection, and contact between the child and the other parties. The court is going to want to know and going to want to read if you or the other party have been sending ugly emails or text messages or issues on social media about the other person. There is a very good chance that if this is going on, that the judge will order you or the other parent to take classes on how to be a good person or how to be a good parent. The seventh factor is whether the past pattern of involvement of the parties with the child reflects a system of values, time commitment, and mutual support. The judge will want to know whether you recently became part of your child's life. Was it just because the other parent wanted child support? Or have you been trying to be part of the child's life the entire time? The eighth factor is the physical proximity of the parties to each other as it relates to the practical considerations of parenting time. For military members, this often becomes a big issue when one parent is stationed in one state and one parent is stationed in the other state. Uh, the judge is going to want to know where are the individuals and does it make sense that the child is with one during the academic year and with the other during the summer months. And finally, the last factor is the ability of each party to place the needs of the child ahead of his or, own, his or her own needs. Is there evidence that you or the other party simply goes out while the child stays at home? Are you spending money on yourself and not the child? Are you feeding the child fast food instead of nutritious food at home? Ultimately, the court is going to make this decision on these nine factors, but it is referred to as the best interest of the child. And that is to say that what you want out of this is simply one out of nine factors. Now, I realize that was a lot of information and you may have some very specific questions as to your case. If that is the case, you can certainly uh, go to the base legal office and request a, an appointment with a legal assistance attorney. Thank you.